Okay, my name is Arthur Japa. I'm an artist. I live in Los Angeles. I'm at my favorite bookstore, Arcana, here in LA. I'm here for Plaster Magazine, here to pick out some books. Uh, okay, this is a good place to start. Uh, I love this series, 33 and the Third. Uh, my favorite, though, is this one about uh, my favorite David Boy album, Low. It was just like, you know, a perfect storm of things. Sci my interest in science fiction, and it's very, you know, draggy, glammy and all that. And my dad came in like, boy, what are you looking at? <laughs> and I was like, it's David Boy, dad, like that. So I'll never forget that. I had the opportunity, I said I had the opportunity. I had the great, great fortune of meeting David Boy. And he was so cool, like down to earth, just, man, amazing. Like just, he actually came to my first art show. I told him about to have my first art show. Like then he said, I'm gonna come. And I was like, oh, that's nice, thank you know. But sure enough, the night of, everybody was like, boys here, boys here, boys here. And he's asking for AJ, so that was pretty amazing. This is one that I think is really phenomenal book. Congo Power and Majesty. Like to me, you know, one of my biggest things I'm constantly talking about is how there's really no contemporary Western art as we understand it without the impact that African artifacts and to a certain degree the aesthetics that powered them had on them so and I look at this stuff and I just think you know it's just funky beautiful funky scary it's rock and roll basically you know that's a really incredible book I was obsessed with books. I mean, my parents would refer to say that he was always obsessed. My parents were college professors. I grew up on a campus, and uh, our next door neighbor was the uh, librarian. And so I can remember as early as like being in the fifth or sixth grade, she would just give me the keys to the library, and I would oftentimes fall asleep in the stacks. And my dad would come and wake me up like midnight. He'd come in and get me or something, like take me home, you know? It's always interesting to see sculptures that are painted because we know like in the West, when we think of like sculptural figures, it's the Greek or Roman thing and they're always white, or as they say, the accidental whiteness of Greek or Roman sculptures because they were not white initially. They were a polychrome just like this. It's just over the years, the painting stuff fell off. And at a certain point, you know, it sort of dovetailed with certain ideas around white supremacy and racism and things like that. So that became this like white figure as a sort of ideal, but you know, it would be like seeing a car that didn't have any paint on it or something. A really strange sort of way that um, these ideas of race and just something decaying sort of coalesced and so it became this new sort of aesthetic, you know, model and stuff. But this is a really, I have this book series here, images of the black, the black in Western art. These have like more contemporary stuff. The early ones in the series have all these images of like knights and saints and things like that in Europe that were black, like Saint Maurice, I always remember. Oh, there's some of that here, so let's see. Things like this, it's like random appearances of black folks, mostly in the margins of famous paintings and stuff. Uh, oh, this I've never seen. I went to Howard University, and this is the image that they would always have, but I've never seen it in color. It's like uh, runaway slaves. So that's actually pretty incredible. Okay, this is a famous, the raft of the Medusa. This is the ship, it was a raft, and so they were throwing the black folks overboard because it was, <laughs> somebody's gotta go. Negroes first, boots. Everybody should have this uh, series of books in their house. Can't go wrong with Adrian Piper. Impact on my thinking of what you could do, you know, in the art space. I would often reference, like, say, Richard Prince, who had a big impact on me, particularly his 
his genius really of selecting images and making new things with appropriate images and stuff. But really, a person who really had a really, like as I say, profound impact on me, a real precedent for what I do, is Adrian Piper. I'm also stumbling on something else I'm seeing here, funk lessons. Adrian Piper's funk lessons. I actually went to see this performance in the 80s, in the early 80s when I lived in Los Angeles. Adrian Piper is the shit. The amazing Bill Trailer. I like to tell people, it's one of my favorite little quips, is that I'm a precocious Bill Trailer. Uh, <laughs> he started uh, painting or drawing like in his 80s. He would just sit on the corner, he'd just start drawing on these little scraps of paper and stuff. But he basically only made work for about a six to seven year period, the last several years of his life. Everybody should have this book, sorry. I know I said that about the other books. I mean, he does the one thing that all great art, I think inevitably does, is that you would just never confuse it with anybody else's work. First of which, as I've always liked to say, I've said this a zillion times, it's like Nam June Paik has this great quote, the godfather of video art. He has a great quote where he says, the culture that's gonna su survive in the future is a culture you can carry around in your head. And I think if you look at black American culture, you see evidence of that because the places in which black American culture is strong are in those spaces where if you're on a slave ship, you could carry it with you, like song, as soon as you get up, dance, oratorical stuff. Those are things that we brought with us, but they continue to develop in the context of the Americas. But when it comes to the visual thing, it was relatively undeveloped. Like, you know, if the music is up here, the visual thing was down here. It doesn't mean that there weren't geniuses, but I mean, as a cultural whole, you didn't see it as much. And, but it's amazing just to see the kinds of work that they produced. Uh, a Bill Trailer, a Sam Doyle, a Minnie Evans. There's a lot of people who are really incredible. I really like to feel like in my work, personally, I'm trying to tap into this. It's not like trying to be willfully primitive or willfully unsophisticated. It's nothing like that. It's just about the thing being, to a certain degree, maybe unmediated or unconstrained. That's the thing I like about it. It's like you get the training, but you get the constraint. You know, But these people, because they're self-taught, as they say, they were operating outside of any kind of constraints. So, you know, you want to figure out how to tap into that in your work. Wow, I just picked this up, uh, Vanishing Point Forever. I love this film. This is one of the coolest films ever, ever made. When he's gonna stop, but who is gonna stop it? Wow, they're all, there's, everything, there's everything in here about it too. Um, Everyone would hope to make a film like this. Um, see, I see in here, there's a piece in here by Richard Prince. I'm not surprised, this makes sense. Like if you think of Richard Prince's work, the Girlfriend series, things like that, it's very clearly tapped into something that this film was tapped into. Man, such an amazing movie. Uh, I feel like, I told somebody once, I feel like I grew up in the car because in Mississippi at the time, you know, you didn't fly anywhere. Or, you know, you didn't even do public transportation if you could avoid it. Black folks really drove everywhere. So there was so much of my upbringing that I saw coming up was from the back of a car. You know what I mean? So this film, when I saw it, really kind of blew my mind. Come on. I Really, 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 really phenomenal film. This will definitely be one of the books I'm gonna take. Mayhem, the premier, ah, I don't know if premier is the right word, but certainly most notorious black metal band. Like ever. And they look cool. I don't really listen to the music so much. <laughs> but I love the way they look. <laughs> I like bookstores. I mean, we need more bookstores. Uh, the internet is cool and all of that. I shop at Amazon just like everybody else because I'm lazy, but there's nothing like coming to an actual bookstore and browsing. 
I mean, the problem with Amazon or any of the sort of online things to a certain degree is just it's just hard to have accidents. You could have search engines and stuff like that, but I don't know. There's nothing as magical as just browsing and coming across something that you didn't know existed, but you're very happy you ran into it. So, Arcana, Apple.